Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my productivity training videos. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks to get more out of Apple Mail. This video is really intended for people who are already using Apple Mail. It's not really a getting started guide. It is really more tips and tricks to get more out of Apple Mail. But if you have any questions uh, about Apple Mail, please feel free to leave me a comment below this video. Now, one of the first things you can do to customize Apple Mail is you can run it in dark mode, which is like what I've got here. Uh, maybe if you open Apple Mail right now, it's currently white and you're wondering, how did you do that? Well, if you're looking for this feature in Apple Mail, you're actually, you actually won't find it. This is actually in your Mac's system preferences. If you go to the general tab, you can see there are some options up here to run your entire system in light mode or dark mode. You can even actually put it on automatic, so based on the time of day, it will adjust. I prefer dark mode. I find it there's less glare and uh, I just quite like the look and feel of dark mode. Now, further to that, if you go command slash and open up, uh, sorry, command comma to open up your system preferences, uh, you'll see under this viewing tab, there is an option to enable or disable use dark backgrounds for messages. So this is just allowing you to choose, do you want the message itself to appear dark as well? Um, I, again, just to be consistent, I've turned that on, but you can toggle that on and off depending on how you like to read your email. In terms of how to browse Apple Mail on a daily basis, I recommend browsing using the favorites up here. Because Apple Mail supports multiple email accounts, you'll see on your sidebar, I have an iCloud account connected here. And here are the mailboxes like my inbox, my sent items, my junk for my iCloud account. And then further down on the sidebar, I have another inbox another area for sent items, junk, and different mailboxes, all for my Google account. And if you haven't already, if I press command slash and go to accounts here, you can connect multiple email accounts. That's one of the nice useful things is I can have my personal and work both feeding into here. Uh, that's one of the reasons I like Apple Mail is even though I have Gmail for my business, um, I don't have one inbox for email and uh, for work and one for personal. Using Apple Mail, I can sync them both to Apple Mail. And that way, when I click on all inboxes at the top, this is all my email from my work email address, my, my uh, Google account, and from my iCloud, my personal email. Because for me, I don't really care so much what email is what. I just want to deal with it all in one place. So I've got that in my favorites up here and you can actually see I can click into just my iCloud or just my Gmail if I want. But most of the time, uh, in fact, all of the time, I'm just working from this one unified inbox. And so this makes it really easy if you do have multiple email addresses to just work in one screen. You can customize these favorites. So if I look down here in Muse, you see I've got this reply folder up here. Maybe I want to add the pipe drive one as well. Well, I can just click this plus icon here and I can choose other uh, mailboxes to add. So I can add this pipe drive one to my favorites and now I've got quick access to that. Now, if you're still relatively new to Apple Mail, one of the first things I recommend people do is if you click on the toolbar up, up the top here and you right click, you can actually customize whether to look at just icons or if you want the text next to these icons to appear, you can, you can customize the look and feel. I quite like just showing the icon. I think it's a bit cleaner. And you can customize this toolbar. So if I click customize here, I can bring up other options. For example, if I need to print emails on a regular basis, maybe I put that up here. Um, I can add in extra spaces as well. Uh, maybe I bring in that color, color button as well. Um, so I can, I can customize where different buttons go and what buttons I want to have access to. So now if I click on an email, I can click that button and I can print really quickly. So that's really useful is customizing the icons up here. I can do the same thing in the compose window as well. So if I click up here to compose a new email and right click in this heading, I can customize the buttons up here. So if I want my text uh, options to make, to change my text size, or if I want to um, bring up this format button here, I can customize these buttons as well. So just really useful way to get quick access to the tools and features you need to use on a regular basis. Now, while watching this video, you may have noticed a couple of extra buttons and options in my Apple Mail. Uh, in my Apple Mail. There's this uh, 
little mail butler icon up here. And when I am composing a message, you can see up here there's an option to send an email later. I've also got email tracking turned on to see if um, uh, emails have been opened and, and links clicked, that type of thing. I can even create emails from templates, although I don't have any set up yet. And so all these additional features that you're wondering, where did they come from? These are not Apple Mail features. This is actually an extension that I've added called Mail Butler. So you can sign up for this third party service uh, and you can add extra functionality to Apple Mail. Things like email tracking, send later, undoing sends within you know, a short time frame. You can undo the send if you need to. You can set up email templates, follow up reminders, all sorts of additional functionality can be added to Apple Mail by signing up to Mail Butler. Uh, and so if I go to my preferences here, I can manage my plugins. I've got the Mail Butler add-on added in here. And so this is just a nice little um, set of extra features that you can add on top of Apple Mail to really add extra functionality. So I can do things like I can snooze this email. I could say, you know, remove it from my inbox, but make it reappear tomorrow or in five days, something like that. So because Apple Mail is lacking in some of these sort of more power user type features, I do like adding in a service like Mail Butler to kind of take it to that next level. Now, one of my top tips for managing email, not just in Apple Mail, but this applies to basically any email provider, is when emails come in, once you've dealt with them, maybe you've, you've responded to the email or you've read it, you've got what you need to do out of it, you can then, if you're on a Mac and if you have the Apple Magic Mouse, if I swipe right to left with my finger, I can bring up these options. So this is the archive button here. If I actually go left to right, I can bring up the mark as unread button. So if I've if I've read it by accident, or sorry, if, yeah, if it's showing as unread uh, like this, and if I want to then mark it as unread, I can then mark that as unread. Or once I have read it, I can swipe right and I can archive that email. Uh, and, and this is a really important thing to do, which a lot of people don't do with their mail, is they don't archive. What archiving is actually doing is it's putting it into this archive folder. So it's not actually deleting the email, it's just moving it out of the main inbox and kind of putting it into like cold storage. It's putting it into a box somewhere. You've still got access to it. I can search for up here and I can go and find it, but I've just removed it from my inbox. So this is a habit I really encourage people to get into because it keeps your inbox really clean and simple like you can see here. So I can see new email just came in actually. I can keep on top of what emails I still need to go and read and deal with. Anything that's been dealt with, I can just archive and that way I keep my inbox nice and minimal. In terms of sorting mail, some people like to use folders to, to sort their mail into different categories. And you can do this by clicking the plus button on any of the accounts that you have connected. So if I want to create a new mailbox in my personal iCloud account here, I can click this plus button and I could give it a name like um, read later. And I can click okay. The read later mailbox appears down here. And if I want to, like I said before, I could move this up to my favorites. So let's put iCloud uh, read later up into my favorites. And so now from my inbox, when I'm going through my email, I could click and drag and I could put this into read later and it actually removes it from my inbox and it puts it into this folder. So that's one way that you can sort your email is by creating these custom folders. You can even automate this as well. If I go command slash, I bring up my preferences. I could create a rule. And if I add a rule here, what I could say is um, group call reminders, just give this rule a name. Let's say if the subject contains MA group call. So let's say, here we go. If it contains this text here, move the message to the read later folder. So this works on a very sort of typical trigger action system. If these conditions here are met, if the subject contains this particular text, move the message to that folder. And I can apply that to any existing mail in my account. And so from now on, any email will automatically move to that folder. I don't have to do that manual drag and drop. That's one way that you can do it. Another option is you can actually create what's called a smart mailbox, which is basically combining a mailbox with a rule, but it's kind of the two features combined. So if I create a smart mailbox here, 
In fact, actually, let me show you one that I've already created. Let's look at Calendly bookings. So let's edit the smart mailbox. You can see this mailbox is finding any email from this particular recipient, notifications at calendly.com. And if the subject contains new event colon, then simply any email meeting those conditions would go into this smart mailbox. So mailboxes and smart mailboxes, mailboxes on their own require that manual sorting and you can manually sort your email if you prefer. A smart mailbox is basically combining a mailbox with a rule to automatically sort your email for you. So I have one here for my Calendly bookings. I can see all of the booking emails that I've recently received. I can see receipts from Apple that have come through recently. That's one I just keep an eye on and uh, a few others as well. Now, personally, I don't use that many folders to sort my email. Um, like I said, I just generally, once I'm done with an email, I archive it to remove it from my inbox. And if I need to go back and find an email, rather than clicking into a mailbox and kind of scanning through and, and searching for these, I instead prefer to just use the search up here. So if you start typing, for example, someone's name, I can click here and select a contact in my system, Warwick Palm. I can then choose if I want to search for emails from Warwick or that I've sent to Warwick, or even just the entire message, as long as Warwick is part of the message, let's search for him. I can also include dates as well. So I could say January, uh, but in fact, let's do a specific date. Let's go 10.01.2022. And I could search for a specific date and a person. So I can see here, here is all email uh, regarding Warwick sent on this particular day or received on that particular day. I can even include keywords as well. Maybe if I include the word Zapier. Um, so I can use a number of search criteria like people, dates, and keywords to find the particular message that I'm looking for. And I find that, to be honest, uh, is a lot quicker than clicking through folders and scrolling through messages to try and find your email. Another useful way that we can sort and manage what we need to do next with an email is to use flags. So if I've selected a message from my inbox here, I, you can see my flag options up here. And if you don't see that, you can customize your menu items again and you can bring in the, the flag button. Now I can click this drop down menu and you can see I've got a number of colored flags here. And if you haven't customized your flags, you will probably see your flags just have colors. It'll be orange, red, purple, blue, and so on. I've actually renamed mine to make them actionable. So how you do this is let's just apply the, uh, let's just say important and let's just flag another one with um, reference here. In my favorites now, if I click and expand, I can see my flagged items, anything that's flagged or I can, I can drill down into particular flags if I want. Once I'm, viewing, once I'm viewing my flags here, I can right click and then I can rename the inbox. And this is how I can change it from being red to I can give it a name. So some of the flags that I use are reply. If I want to just sort of leave a message in my inbox but remind myself that I need to reply later, I can use that. Important might be, uh, it's something important, I'm gonna come back to it, but kind of don't forget about it. Read might be, yep, again, like a newsletter, read this later. Action would be, uh, I need to take some action on this, uh, I need to kind of do something and then follow up. Reference might be any important information I want to keep for later, like a booking reference for uh, accommodation or flights, something like that. I've got one here specific to me, chat to Warwick. If this is, you know, I need to chat to a member of my team. And then gray, I'm actually not using gray, so it's just called gray at the moment. But these, uh, the way I use flags here is these are sort of temporary, temporary flags that I apply to my email. So I can say, look, here's everything I need to, uh, everything that's important. Once I've dealt with it though, I then clear the flag and reference as well. If it's like flight details or a booking, once I don't need it, I remove the flag and I can, I can get rid of it. And so doing that means I can kind of triage and sort my mail into these different categories. And even if the email is in my inbox or if I've archived it, uh, I can still find it here in this flagged section. Another really useful feature of Apple Mail is you can save certain contacts as VIPs. So I can add this contact to a VIP here. And you'll see in your favorites, you have a list of VIPs, people that you um, kind of view as, you know, more important contacts in your address book. 
So I can see any email from a VIP here. So number one, it is a useful way to sort emails and show these are emails that you've received from the important people in your life. But the other really useful thing about this is the notifications. So as you can see here in my preferences, in for my new message notifications, that's the uh, sound that you will hear. That's the sound that pings and the notification that flies into the screen when you have a new message. I've actually said, I don't, want, normally this would be set to inbox only, but I don't want to be notified about every single email coming in because I would have notifications popping up pretty often and uh, I find that quite annoying. But what I can say is, do notify me if an email comes in from a VIP. Um, I could say all contacts or I could even specific, uh, set specific mailboxes here, but I just keep it on VIPs because uh, that way I can keep all email notifications turned off unless it's from one of those really important people. So that's a, one of the reasons I really like to use the VIPs. Another slightly lesser known feature of Apple Mail, or really this is more of an iCloud Mail feature rather, is if you do use iCloud Mail uh, with Apple Mail, if you log into your iCloud account in your browser and go to this little preferences button here, the rules that I showed you before, we can actually set up rules on the server side. So what I mean by that is here in Apple Mail, if I set up a rule here, like this one I set before, for this rule to run, Apple Mail needs to be open. My computer needs to be turned on first and then Apple Mail needs to be open. So the sorting of my email only happens if those two things are true, um, which I mean, for most of the time is probably okay. The nice thing about setting up a rule on your iCloud preferences online is that Apple Mail doesn't need to be open. Your computer doesn't even need to be turned on. So if you're checking mail on your phone, these rules uh, can be applied uh, so that the your email is sorted and flagged when you look at it on your phone. The Apple Mail app doesn't even need to be open. So given the choice, I prefer to set up rules here on the server side. You can see I have quite a lot set up there so that my Mac doesn't have to be turned on and really so that when I look at my phone, every, all the email has been sorted and is in the right place. Now, if you are experiencing any issues with Apple Mail, if it's running a bit slow or maybe the search isn't quite reliable, it's not finding messages, this can happen over time as more and more mail comes in and lots of downloads get saved to your computer. It can just slowly start to degrade the performance of Apple Mail over time. What I recommend is using an app like Clean My Mac. This is an app I've talked about on my YouTube channel before. I mean, firstly, Clean My Mac is a great tool for just clearing out a lot of the old junk on your computer and freeing up space. But one of the useful features is under the maintenance tab here, there is this speed up mail option. So I can click that, I can run this. I won't do it now because it'll close my mail, but it's great for uh, optimizing mail if it's running a bit slow or if you're finding the search not that reliable. Clean My Mac will perform these maintenance routines and it can uh, just kind of clean things up and, and um, speed up Apple Mail again. What it will also do is it can remove any downloaded attachments as well, because once you open an email and download any images or PDFs, those actually get saved onto your computer. So after, after a while, once you've used them, you don't really need them anymore, but they are still taking up space on your local hard drive. So using Clean My Mac, Clean My Mac you can actually remove a lot of those old downloaded attachments. Of course, they're still online on the server in case you need them again in the future. The final feature I wanted to show you is under the preferences in privacy. This is a feature that came out fairly recently with some of the updates to iCloud and uh, Apple, uh, Apple's operating system is you can now enable this protect mail activity option. And this is gonna hide your IP address. And so it just means people who are tracking emails don't get as much information about you. So it comes as part of iCloud and Apple Mail. I like to have it turned on, knowing that my mail is a little bit more private than it was before. So there we go. Those are some tips and tricks on how to get more out of Apple Mail. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.